energy. So decreases in energy and high and and decreases in fluid balance or dehydration has the ability to affect your concentration. So the first thing is having a, a fluid strategy in place. And if you look at any of the uh, whether it be archery or whether it be golf or other sports that re rely on a high level of focus or concentration, you need to be drinking fluids a minimum of every 20 minutes. And what a lot of people don't know is that water is actually not the best thing to hydrate with. I said this. You do I need an, an electrolyte solution. Yeah, I said this the other day. So uh, it's not that you need... Uh, something with a huge amount of sugar or a sports drink, but without question, when you are hydrating through your, if if you're going through long shoots and you're you know, again concentration or focus or precision really matters, then you should be sipping on fluids and you should be monitoring your hydration. So actually checking the color of your urine two hours, three hours before you go out on that shoot to see where you're at. So it's all of these techniques that need to be implemented as part of your overall strategy that's critical uh, to how you perform then in German competition. Yeah, and I think that's um, a lot of people you see, they think, you know, they forget about the electrolytes, the salts and everything that are leaving, that are leaving the body and they just hit the water. And I've, what I've found is if I compete on only water alone, I get headaches, bad. I don't know what, yeah. I've got no idea what causes it. But I think... What woke up the shooting world was, as I said, Sean O'Brien came on the other day and he said he went to the World Championships, he got to stand five and he was drained. Mm. And all of a sudden my inbox just went bang, 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 bang. Mm. If this elite athlete's drained, where, where on earth am I at? Yeah, yeah. But, well, there's a couple of things. Uh, and I actually, I, I give Sean a call um, just to, to go through from his perspective what he feels the demands are uh, and what he feels, how it differs in, in, yeah. in the demands to rugby. And like the reality is that even though obviously rugby is one of the most physical sports there is in the world, if not the, for 80 minutes, uh, the demands are different from a focus and from a concentration point of view. So the mental drain that occurs is, is huge. And if you're out for two or three hours on a shoot, that will absolutely drain you. Yeah. You know, your body only has the ability to really maintain that high level of concentration for short periods. So there's a mental skills component where you're dipping in and you're dipping out of it, but then your fueling and your nutrition and your hydration is all going to play a major role. So I would say that the day before, is when your preparation starts and you would want to have a little bit more food taken on the day before because what, you're going to be burning. What sort of food? What, what, what sort of food are we talking about? What, cause, and so I keep things very simple when it comes to nutrition. The first thing is that you need to be eating whole foods and you need to be eating mixed meals. So it's a combination of protein, carbohydrate and fat. And it's not just high intakes of carbohydrates, high intakes of protein. And carb. So in simple terms, what it means is if you have porridge, you have a protein with it. So that can be yogurt or it could be boiled eggs on scrambled eggs on toast. But that you're combining sources of energy which provide a very, very stable increase in your blood sugar. Yep. So you're looking for a really stable blood sugar all the time throughout all meals. So in most meals, what you're talking about is three uh to three to four meals on an average day whereas if you're trying to fuel a little bit more an increase in calories you're looking at six meals right. so a lunch might be baked potato it could be soup and sandwiches it's at least seven portions of fruit and vegetables and your overall intake of energy is spread out over three hours uh, a minimum of three hours so you're eating over a 12 hour period it's every two to three hours that you're, you're trying to eat. So right. it's not that the food that you're eating is any way different to what's normal to you. It's that there's an increase in total calories and frequency of, of the meals that you are consuming. Yeah, yeah, I know, I get that. Um, what, um, if we're going to be shooting, say, 15 stations, yes. which generally is what we're doing, there's, there's 15 stations out for three hours, um, what intervals would you be snacking and grazing or 
throughout those 15 stations and what could we take to the course with us food wise to 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 snack on what's going to give us the best performance okay so the the best nutritional intervention we've already talked about so the thing that's going to implement influence performance more than anything else is if you become dehydrated yeah. okay so an electrolyte with some carbohydrate what you're looking for is a probably a three to four percent carbohydrate solution so what that means is your typical ors or your diora light or your tablet yeah you need to you need to get that to a small amount of carbohydrate but an electrolyte so that's your first thing and you're sipping on that fluid Every constantly. twenty to yeah, thirty constantly minutes. Just... Yeah. Now you don't want to drink so much that you need to go to the toilet all the time. Like you don't, but you still need to drink enough that you remain in fluid balance. That's what the target is. Then, from an eating point of view, I think you're probably looking at snacking on something small every thirty minutes or so. Right. I would say four snacks, um, and, and what that is equal to. Uh, in numbers is probably about 50 grams of carbohydrate. What gives you 50 grams of carbohydrate? Over an hour, two bananas, a homemade granola bar. Um, uh, actually, an apple juice will work well with a granola bar. Okay. Mixed, mixed dried fruit and nuts. Um, but I, I like to include a little bit of protein in there as well. In like, let's say if you were making up your own homemade snacks, that again, it's really helping to maintain a very stable blood sugar. So when your body needs it, it has access to energy, but you're not getting those real fluctuations that we talked about earlier, where if you were to, yeah, so if you're drinking a kind of fizzy drink or if you're drinking a Red Bull with a lot of sugar, you're getting a caffeine hit and you're getting a lot of carbs and, you know, what you've got, you may have already nervous energy in your body. You don't want to go there. Um, I actually just deviate for one second, tell you a little anecdote. So last year, um, I mentioned to you before we came on the call that I played a bit of golf and we had a big competition and I wore a blood glucose tracker. So a blood glucose tracker is something that's going to tell you when you eat something, how your blood sugar is responding. And what you want, if you looked at my finger there, is a very slow rise. And like you said, you don't want these waves. Well, what I couldn't believe is that I, perform, I I prepared incredibly well for the competition. And I was stunned to see that there was a huge spike early on in the game, in the, in the okay. competition. And I had prepared well. And I went back and I asked uh, a colleague of mine who works in physiology, I said, what's this about? And he said, that's the adrenaline response to a certain moment within that competition. And I said, what are you? He said, yes, yeah, so you get a massive blood glucose dump into your system if you've got a lot of nervous energy. Really? So I was like, yeah. So if you're really pumped up, you've got these moments where you get surges of adrenaline if like, you're nervous. Like putting petrol on a fire almost. Like putting petrol on a fire. So if your nutrition doesn't complement that, you can imagine how jittery and unstable and how that will affect your concentration, how that will affect your ability to track, how it will affect your eyesight, all of those things, and your ability to maintain stable concentration yeah, over time. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. So it's just an in another interesting thing to say, like, all of these things are playing into your preparation for any competition that you're doing. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. Um, one guy messaged me, said he can't come on. Um because he's working, but he wanted me to ask a question on caffeine and nicotine. Mm. What? So, so he said he, uh, he said he, he, he the other week he worked late. Uh, he got up. He normally has one cup of coffee, but he felt really down, and he had five cups of coffee. He said, and he said he shot the worst he's ever shot in his life. Yeah. So caffeine um, is a is a. Is, it, is it's something that people will have a love-hate relationship with. They, they either are a caffeine responder or a non-responder. So we know that caffeine was on, uh, from an athletic performance perspective, was on the banned substance list at one point because of the impact on overall improvements in performance. Yeah. Okay, so caffeine can improve concentration. It can improve, improve focus. And 
it can even reduce our, our perception of fatigue. But if you get it wrong, and if you overdo caffeine, it can be a complete disaster, mm. a complete disaster. So caffeine is something that you can manipulate through practice. And I would say you're not even going to fully understand whether you're a good caffeine responder or a bad responder in training. It's only when you're in competition that you're going to start to really understand because how it mixes with your oh adrenal response yeah. and yeah your ner- exactly your hormones so uh, in that particular situation it can affect your gut it can make you want to feel like you want to go to the toilet and it can give you the shakes and it can give you the jitters and the other thing is that because you're talking about an event that may last three hours you could be having a come down if you use caffeine too soon before an event yeah, that's quite important, so isn't it? You, the, these these come downs with caffeine and nicotine and stuff like that. So if you're to use caffeine, uh, what I would be saying is that you need to probably use it potentially small doses through, you know, maybe the midpoint of an event. Right. Uh, and if you respond well to caffeine, it could be something that could give you a real benefit towards the end of, of a shoot. But don't, but don't um, get it wrong. But don't get it wrong. And I've got it wrong. As a, as a young athlete, I've got it wrong. I've been in the toilet at half time in games. And I've seen athletes who, before big competitions, taken mega doses of caffeine and like drop three balls. Uh, and, and because they're already managing the nerves of the, of, of the game, and then caffeine is just, it's spilled over. Understandable. I like that. I like where we're going. Yeah. Uh, nicotine. Smoke, yeah. Smoking and nicotine. Yeah, so nicotine is a beta blocker, uh, which obviously is something that uh, can affect your nervous response. So you'll often find like alcohol and uh, nicotine are things that are, are, is it even like, yeah, what's the, is there any rules around nicotine use? No, 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 we don't. At the Olympics and that, we're, 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 if we go to some of the IWSF shoots, which I know some elite athletes are watching, they have to adhere to the Olympic drugs regime. Okay. So they have to be careful. But in the in the majority of people that are watching you, where the money is in the sport, that's um, there's, there's not really any testing. So nicotine, if you see people just smoking away, vaping away. Right, okay, okay. Um... <laughs> I am a serious anti-smoker, so you're probably asking somebody who's going to provide uh, maybe insights that people are not particularly interested in hearing, or maybe are going to continue to do what they're doing anyway. But it's it ultimately what it is. It's a it's the more that you can control your responses to a stimulus, the better. That's the way that I feel about sports. So every aspect of your pre- preparation or what you can do to execute your abilities or your skills under pressure that's what it's all about so from a nicotine point of view if you are um if you are uh using nicotine is the nicest way that i can put it (laughs) and you are you know what you're doing is you're continuing to walk a tightrope uh, tightrope because you are addicted to nicotine and if you become irritable you need that to control a response or again need you need the nicotine to help you control a nervous response yes yeah. so the less that you're dependent on any external element or drug the better um, and that's how i feel about it and that's why i'm such a strong believer in having your Sorry, I actually didn't put my phone on um, uh, airplane mode before I started. We're good. We're good. We're good. There we go. Yeah, um, I did a test with one of my clients who smokes a lot when he shoots, and I made him shoot a whole event without any kind of nicotine intake. He actually shot better but felt worse. I mean, I don't know the sciences behind any of this, but... Yeah, well, the, the, the big thing, it, it, it could, the opposite could happen on another day, but what you did was you narrowed his focus um, and you took away something that, if, if he knows that that's not a variable and that that's something that 
he's not going towards. It's it's almost like his his attention, his attention and his focus is much more on his the task at hand. Got it. So what you've done is you've removed an external stimulus, and the less that um, you know, we're talking about mental skills here. The more that you can focus on the task at hand, the better. Why he felt worse is because his body is going through with withdrawal. Cold turkey. He's already cold turkey, but he's already gone through something where he's in a stress response, and that is his coping mechanism. So that's why I'm saying about how important it is for you to remove as many variables and be as control of the key ones. That's what really matters. If you were going to compete, say you were me, um, I play rugby, I'm sociable. The World Championship starts for me on a Thursday. When should my last alcohol intake be? Okay, so when it comes to alcohol, it is 100% about the dose. Uh, you can have a glass of wine two days before. Uh, we'll say two days before, and the impact will be minimal. If you are taking this seriously, if you're really taking it seriously, then you shouldn't have any alcohol within five days of an event. Okay. Um, uh, and, and the reason for that is because you want to be as fresh as possible. And what you want to be able to do is sleep and prepare as well as you can. And alcohol, even a small amount of alcohol, will impact your sleep. Perfect. That was a question that came up. How important is sleep to performance? It's so important that it's very, very difficult to know whether it's nutrition or sleep. Probably, oh, really? you know, like... Sleep has become one of those things that is such in such sharp focus now that we're, I mean, every elite athlete is tracking it. I know we're looking to track it, people who are generally aware of their, of their sleep habits. But um, I was listening to a podcast with Rory McElroy only last week. And it was really fascinating to hear that he used to enjoy a glass of wine just enough you know just with dinner he might have a, a glass of wine not 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 even any more of that but because he was wearing a tracker he could see the impact on his sleep and how that was affecting his recovery really? so he's really cut back on the amount of alcohol he's consuming because it affects his recovery and his focus and concentration and like i say this is not a cheap sport i think i do think that everything that you're going to say tonight we're going to see a huge spike in people i've got um i've actually had five universities message me from America that are watching this now, that from for their wow. for their sports team. So I think you're going to be hearing from uh, people all around the world. Um, there is um there's an energy drink within the shooting sports called Stay Focus. Um, I know it's shit. It's full of sugar. It's 480 calories per sachet, and. It's a huge spike, but then, you know, 10 minutes later, you're on the floor. What's, yeah. what's a good electrolyte? Do you have any names or anything like that that you could push people towards? We actually use, uh, there's, there's um, ORS, it's called. It's an oral rehydration salt. Um, it's an electrolyte salt. And the, the reason I like it is because you can totally manipulate how much carbohydrate? So you mentioned there that drink that you're talking about with that amount of calories. Can you hear me? Yeah. Back. Sorry. So something with that amount of calories has got a lot of pure sugar. And what I like about the oral rehydration salts is that you're in total control. So you do want some carbohydrate. It's not that you don't want any, because the carbohydrate will help to stabilize your energy and it will also help with rehydration. But something like an or, 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 or I actually have one right beside me, by pure chance. <laughs> by, <laughs> by pure chance. And I, 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 believe me, I don't do any product endorsements or anything like that. So. That's what it looks like. Okay, perfect. A bit like Barocca tablets. Or as. Very like Barocca tablets, but as an electrolyte. <laughs> and there's one over in the UK as well called uh, Fizz. I think it's P-H-I-Z-Z. -Z, and that's another, that's another good one. What I used to do, I, I told the, people, the, um, the audience in the week, many, 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 many years ago, I was lucky enough to, um, to play 18 holes with Tiger. Really? At, yeah, at, um, 
a place called Fox Harbour in Nova Scotia. And he just had his entourage with him. And one of his entourage, I was drinking water and Lucasade. And he said to me, no, 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 make your own energy drink. And I've always done it since then. I had, it was um, half fresh orange juice, half water and a teaspoon of salt. Yep, that'd that, work. That's what he had me drink. Tastes like shit, but it yeah. works. No, it does. It does. Um, and don't get me wrong. This is not, this isn't cheap. Like it's not cheap, but... You, you know exactly what you're taking and that's what the value is. Um, Trust me, the, when it comes, the other... when there's nothing, there's no part of this sport that we do that's cheap. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm that's, sure. Uh, that's for sure. Um, yeah, no, I'm sure. But there's something like that. I, I would actually say if the only thing, the only thing that people took away from this, if this is all they took away, that they switched their hydration strategy to uh, a salt or an electrolyte drink, they made sure that they didn't drink alcohol the night before. And, I mean, and, well, maybe I'm kind of pushing the boat out here, but if you start your your preparation the day before Wait, rather than the day of. I'm dead serious. I'm taking I'm taking notes. Like, I, I've won the World Championship many, many times. And if I can get better, I'm going to get better. I'm, I'm going to study this and I can promise you this will be passed on to my, this will be passed on to my students. So this is going to be big. Brilliant. Um, brilliant. Well, I can honestly say, I can honestly say this stuff, really does make a difference the the, the 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 where people slip up where people slip up is this type of uh, scenario or language they go out and they say oh well you know i went out and i had a takeaway the night before i had five or six pints and the next day i shot the lights out yeah, or yeah. i had an unbelievable game you know i i like it was one of my best performances and you're going yeah but you need to be consistent yeah, yeah, yeah. and that isn't what high performance is about yeah. you can do that once off but do you want to put back-to-back -back competitions together five days to five days in a row do you want to do that on a consistent level or do you want to talk about the one time that you drank a load of pints and then you you know you had a great competition like that's just that's just nonsense um so two things i want to get into because i've just ordered your book i've got I, as i said to you before we've got a couple of um, Royal. If I'm at home, what can I prepare from your book that's going to help me on the course? As you said, the granola bar, etc., etc., etc. Yeah. When I've not got access to a kitchen to prepare my food, i.e., I'm yes. a, I'm abroad. What should I replace those supplements or food intakes with? I.e., the people have given me a list that they're using nuts, jerky bananas what what would you take from your book to prepare what what could i buy from a store if i'm abroad okay give me one second one second Yeah, that's the best way. So, I want to give people a, a kind of a feel for what the book is about. Um, so what I've done is I've broken the book into what we call exercise recipes um, and re exercise recipes and rest day recipes. Okay. So the idea is that it's dependent on the type of demands of the day and the demands of the session. So a day that you're going to be out you could be on your feet a lot. Something like your protein squares like that is a is a really good snack to have. The beauty of it is like this banana blueberry bread, this banana you know, recovery scones that look like that. And a slice of that for breakfast or even slices of that brought with you on a lunchbox with a bit of peanut butter is absolutely perfect. Really? Uh, so there's lots of ideas in there. When it comes to being out on the road, I think the most important thing to think about is where fresh, try and choose, like you said, bananas and pears and fruit, and then move to, if you're using nuts, a little bit of dried fruit in there will work well too. So a little bit of carbohydrate and not just, so nuts are made up of predominantly healthy fats and some protein, but a little bit of carbohydrate, again, your brain is using a huge amount of glucose because there's so much, when you're focusing and you're really working hard, it's like an exam. 
your brain is using more carbohydrates. So that needs to be readily available over time. So it's a combination of both. Um, in certain cases, there are some good products now, I have to say, on the market. So natural fruit and energy bars um, that are made from dried fruits and that are combined with nuts and nuts and seeds and things like that. Like, for example, I, again, I have no relationship to the brand, but something like a Kind bar. Yeah, yeah. You know, th those type of bars... Do you notice they're actually really good? Like, my father always says um, about the value of things, and when you spend a bit more, you generally get quality. Well, to be honest with you, it's true. And it's certainly true with the snack market. So if you see a snack bar for 50 cents, you know it's going to be vegetable oil and sugar. But if you if you get a snack bar that's two euros or 250, generally speaking, if it's, if it suggests it's natural ingredients, and also look for have a quick look at the back and see is there a combination of protein, carbohydrates, and fat? That's what you're looking for. Perfect. Um, what's your thoughts on the if they taste good, they're no good for you? Oh, uh, um, well, I think it really depends. Um, not not always the case. Good, like yes. not always the case. It's just no, one of the questions just one of the questions that got sent in. I, I'd like to know more specifically what, 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 what you mean. Like I suppose I I prepare all of my own recipes, I, 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 I cook all of my own food. Um if you're talking about uh oh oh okay. If it was about let's say for example a protein bar. Yeah, that's what I think they're talking um, about. That's what they're talking okay. about. Yeah, so most most protein bars are junk. Like they're <laughs> processed junk. They're they're calorie controlled. They're better than a. I'm not going to name any brands, but they're better than a regular bar of chocolate, just because they're controlled in calories. And you might get a bit of protein, but no, you don't want to fool yourself there with the protein bars. Superb, excellent. I think that's what they were talking about, and the questions just popped up there. What about protein bars, grenade bars, full fill bars, that sort of things, etc. So. Um, there's an issue that could be could arise uh, with something like uh, your sport or when you're shooting and that's polyols so protein bars are made up with, with a type of fibre to replace the sugar and if you consume too much of this particular type of fibre it can actually cause gastro upset right so the last thing that you want is if you're out and you've eaten too many of these protein bars and you've got an upset stomach. Now, that's not to say they're all bad, but nine out of 10 of them are junk. Uh, there's a great question here, more not so much on the shooting sports, but generally when we shoot, we have a long drive home afterwards. So once the yeah. shoot is over, how do you continue to remain alert and await for the potential long drive home? Is it again just down to hydration and feed yourself? So I, I, I would say that there's a couple of things to consider there. Um, that's, a, that's actually what would you call a really useful, a real world question. So what you need after um, a, a shoot is that you need to have a mixed meal again. And I think sometimes there may be a tendency, I don't know, I, I'm going to refer to games like, like, like golf, where people go in and they get an unhealthy processed meal. I don't know the culture much. Yeah. You're, you're pretty much hit the nail on the head. Yeah, so if you go in and let's say, for example, you have a big curry, just as, as an example, and you have naan bread with it and you've eaten a lot of rice, well, that's going to create a high glycemic load and a large load on your system. So if you really want to be clever about it, you're better eat, eating something that's balanced and healthy but not a major portion yeah. so you're better off having a small meal soon after after the event and then having another healthy snack for the way home so i wouldn't really encourage the caffeine or stimulus because you won't be able to sleep but staying hydrated and having a moderate meal and one to follow up on the way home is a better approach than having a big meal where your body is going I need, like, I actually feel like I need to sleep. Yeah, I need help here. <laughs> yeah. Um, two, two more questions. I just had a message come from my friend that we spoke about uh, uh, from the UAE. He wants me to yeah. he wants me to buy three of your books from you today 
and give away in the quiz tomorrow night, which I hold. So we are going to have oh, well, we are going to have three of the books for prizes in the quiz tomorrow. So that's great. Um, gel sachets. I would say only in very, very, very rare scenarios would you be turning to gels. I, I, the way that I would say that you would use a gel is that you haven't prepared well. You just have not prepared well for you just need a big, last. You just... It's like you're, you know, there's 30 minutes left in it and you feel absolutely completely sh wiped. Um, but even in that case, the sports drink is still going to be better. But in a case where you've just not prepared well and you need a hit to get through the last 30 minutes, it's only that kind of situation. Or okay, scenario. perfect. Very rarely. CBD oil, yes or no? So the way that I would position myself as a practitioner is very, very open-minded, genuinely, yeah. very open-minded. But I'm also evidence-based, evidence-based. And there are hundreds of companies and there are hundreds, maybe thousands now of athletes who are either hooked up with different brands uh, or companies or who have personal anecdotal stories to tell about how wonderful CBD oil is. The reality is that the evidence is not there. The evidence is not there yet. Uh, I have, um, I sorry, not going to say I have. I know of athletes that use it and swear by it for recovery, for sleep, for focus, for concentration. The evidence is not there yet. Perfect. That's good enough for me. Um, I, there's one subject I don't know if you want to touch on it or not, but it's coming. It keeps popping up, popping up. There's a lot of diabetics in shooting. Okay. Are they type 2 diabetics, I assume? This is type 2, yeah. The same. We've had four questions. Yeah. Please, Ben, any advice on type 2 diabetes? Because what tends to happen is when their sugar levels spike or they change, in shooters, we've either, one of our eyes is dominant. So if I shoot from the right shoulder, my right eye is generally the dominant one or I have to close this one. What you find is, especially with my father who's diabetic, if he gets his sugar levels wrong, his eyes will swap and this one will become dominant and then it's a shit show. We could do the entire life on this particular topic yeah, and it's something so. I feel really, really strongly about. Um, I, I, I know uh, people who ha have uh, type 2 diabetes and it's something that I can't emphasise enough needs to be managed on an ongoing basis and not just in preparation for a big shoot or an event yeah. like that's so critical because if you're not in control of it you, you you know you can really through lifestyle measures you can really control your blood sugars and that's the most most important message the athletes that i've been working with um who are type 1 diabetics not not, not type 2 have been blown away by doing one simple thing mixed meals consistently don't add extra carbohydrates or don't have a meal that's just carbohydrates so for example uh, i found that diabetics work much much better with things like scrambled eggs and a slice of brown bread toast and avocado than with a bowl of porridge right okay so what you're getting there is protein carbohydrate and fat rather than just carbohydrates alone so mixed meals absolutely critical mixed meals critical carbohydrate protein and fat in in simple terms it means that you're having steak or fish or chicken with vegetables and a small portion of rice or pasta or bread or but the portion is small yeah yeah, yeah. the other thing the other thing that i would say on it is that do not drink do not drink calories do not drink carbohydrate based drinks that means fruit juices, that means smoothies, that means sports drinks. Just avoid them. Use your electrolyte solution in small quantities or make up the drink um, that, are, to be honest with you, it's an electrolyte solution that will be best in that situation. Excellent. Back on to those electrolyte solutions. There's a question here. One of the gentlemen has just said um, he's been advised to stay away from energy drinks due to blood pressure medication. Are those okay or not? Uh, I so he's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. Um, I would say that it would depend on the volume that he would use. 
So let's say if the, if they recommend one of these per hundred ml, I would say to do maybe to be very safe or to be on the safe side, do one to three hundred ml. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. for every large bottle, he's only having two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. That's a good friend of mine, so I can pass that on. The worst. Yeah. The, so just to quickly, I know you're busy. We've just got over everything that's great and is going to make us better. What's the worst things we can do? What's the worst intakes? Like full English breakfast. One of the jar guys there said, before I compete, I have a full English. Yeah. Well, the thing about the full English and the reason why you may potentially get away with the full English is because it's a mixed meal. Now, it's a desperately unhealthy mixed meal. But <laughs> what he's getting there is stable energy. So, like, you've got a balance there. Do you want to eat something like overnight oats, which is a mixed meal too, but it's very beneficial for your health, and you're going to be in the sport for 10 years longer, and you're going to be a lot healthier performing. You know, I, I think stop isolating one meal on, I always say game day, but yours is, you know, competition day. Yeah. If, if you really, if you genuinely want to improve, don't think about meals in isolation. Think about the consistency of the meals together. But uh, what's the worst thing that you can do? Drink sports drinks, sorry, mainly fizzy drinks. Yeah. Uh, you know, using really high sugary uh, snack bars and gels, not getting a sufficient sleep, drinking alcohol, overloading too much in caffeine, not having a system or not having a practice or a preparation plan in place for you to go in and execute. Like the, the athletes, the best athletes that I work with, and I would consider them world class, they prepare for a game on Saturday or Sunday on Monday. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, yeah. why they consistently perform at the highest level. Now, all I'm saying within your sport is that you have to modify your behavior from Monday or Tuesday. I'm not saying you've got to live like a saint, but you do need to start getting yourself in the zone. And that's where nutrition could be such a huge asset to you if you get that right. We've got quite a few juniors on here that are like 14 to 16. Are we just same game plan? Yeah, I would say not to mess with caffeine at all. If you're if you're a, a junior, I don't see the benefit of it. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for those people to get involved in real, true preparation and have it be what they use for their careers. Um, they the reality of it is that they can mix up their snacks that little bit more. They can use like your Nature Valley granola bar yeah. uh, and, and a piece of fruit and a sports drink and get away with it because they're growing, they're using more energy, they're generally more active compared to somebody in their late 30s, 40s, 50s who also need to be conscious of their general health. Um, perfect, perfect, perfect. Mate, I think we've covered everything. That's, I, I mean, like I said to you, this is a sport with certainly high net worth but with absolutely zero scientific um, analysis on the sport. Um, so what you've done tonight, I think it's going to change it for a lot of people. Um, what's Where do people buy the book? Uh, you can get it on Amazon. Um, I, it's out of, it, so that's probably the best place to, to get it. Uh, this um, Tiana Skelton has just put, where can we buy the book? Because Amazon seems to be sold out. Well, I know that it's coming back online this week and I wouldn't mind actually just mentioning that I launched a brand new website um, this week um, and that's, uh, let me just type it in. Yeah, put it in there and I can pin it. Uh, this took me two years to develop, but it's an extra level of detail up on the book and it's davynutrition.com. There you go, perfect. So I'm going to be adding meal plans. Um, I'm going to be adding recipes. Um, all the nutrition information is there. There's going to be articles there. And what I'd actually say is, you know, we'll continue this conversation offline. And if you thought that there was an interest, what I could start to do um, over the coming weeks is I could put together some meal plans on my website that people may find useful what's the um, what's the na what's, what's the name of the book uh, eat up raise your game eat up raise your game 
Edo, raise your game. That's um, that's a client of mine from Jamaica that wants to uh, that's asking that. So, um, guys, look, we're running out of time. Yeah, I'm fine. anything for free the knowledge that you have is going to change the game it's certainly going to give me a far better insight into how to monitorize and peak peak out my performance so uh, let me pin that i think i think the the, the kind of the, the the messages that i want to uh, people to take home um, is that in terms of if you if you look at athletic performance okay we break it down into pillars and there's a couple of really really key pillars you've got technical tactical you've got physical and you've got lifestyle yeah okay so they're all the components and what you do within your sport is underpinned by all of those pillars if any one of those pillars drop, then your ability to sustain success, sustain, sustain performance is limited. So we're constantly talking about that uh, and how we can, and, and that's why people monitor sleep. That's why people are diligent about their nutrition. That's why people become fit and able. Like there's, there's like, just to, again, for total clarity, we, we, we talked about Sean O'Brien at the beginning. There's one really important reason why Sean is able to transfer and perform. And that's because of his physical fitness as well as everything else. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. has an ability to manage the stress load. His overall body is able to manage at the demands of a new sport, whereas other people may need to spend more time to get up to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So of course he's skilled. Of course he's got the craft and the technicality, but he also has the physical preparation done through years of being a professional athlete to transfer into a new sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate that. Today. My phone's blowing up in front of me, Ben. I'll pay for a meal plan. I'll pay for a, I'll pay for a meal plan. I'd pay for a meal plan. So what I would suggest, though, is that if you don't mind them, just come to your website or to your Instagram page. Yeah. And go to you direct, I think, is the easiest way. Or you just yeah. design one and we'll, we'll figure out a way of monetizing that for you because I think that's important because this is, this is game-changing stuff. So... Um, all the people that have messaged well, me, yes, I'll speak to Daniel's private to this, and we'll, and we'll see what we can come up, we can, what we can come up with. Okay, great. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm like ultimately, what I want is to help people perform better. That's why I'm in this. So, um, if that's if this information is useful and beneficial, that's 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 me being happy. I really, really appreciate you coming on. Thanks for making time and getting back to me, and we'll speak uh, speak over the, over the week. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Guys, that was absolutely invaluable. Um, like I said, it's going to be the best one yet. And without doubt, we... we uh...